Good morning. Well, we have enjoyed our journey through 1 Samuel. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, there are wonderful lessons to be learned from the early life of David. And uh, we move in 2 Samuel to um, his, his, his kingship and his, uh, all the things that happened to him when that period of, of um, I was going to say infancy, but of youth, of young, young life, when everything was very uncertain and very dangerous, we move to the place where he becomes king. And at the end of the, the previous book, uh, Saul has died, sadly, and uh, Jonathan and his other sons have died on the mountain in the battle with the Philistines. And uh, 2 Samuel opens with uh, just a little bit of um, information that is interesting, I think. Um, so David, it says in verse 2, uh, well, verse 1 and 2, had uh, gone back to Ziklag and had been in Ziklag for two days, recovering from everything that had happened, from his exhaustion and that long march and that chasing of the Amalekites and the battle with the Amalekites and then distributing all the spoil to the people of the land. And uh, two, two days he's in Ziklag and on the third day um, a man came from Saul's camp. He had torn clothes and he had earth on his head and he bows low to David and he reports to him that Many people have died, um, and Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. And David interrogates him and asks him, how does he know that they're dead? And he says he happened to be uh, on the mount, and there was Saul, um, seriously injured and asking to be killed. And... Uh, uh, and he, he says that he ran him through and took the crown and the armlet from his arm and brought them to David. So he's come to David to tell him that Saul is dead. He must have mean, been amongst those that stripped the body of Saul and his sons and did what was done to their body, um, which was awful at the end of the last book. And he's come to David, I think, in the hope that David will say to him, um, thank you, thank you for killing my enemy, um, thank you for killing the king and clearing the way for me to become king. But his response is quite the opposite. He is enormously distressed. David is so, so distressed. Um, he, he mourns all day for Saul and his sons. His heart is very heavy and it's very interesting, isn't it, that all these men that Saul chased and took Saul and his army chased were still in their hearts loyal to the king. They, they, they treasured him greatly because he was anointed by God. However far his path had wandered from the right path, he was still a king anointed by God to lead the people. And they mourned him as such. <coughs> and um, <coughs> he speaks again to the young man and asks him an interesting question. He's an Amalekite, which is interesting because he's not a Philistine. Um, he's an Amalekite. He's the same race as the people who had invaded uh, Ziklag. And he says in verse 14, How is it you are not afraid? to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed. How none of his men would have touched Saul. How many, those, those times when Saul was vulnerable and they wanted David to kill him. When David refused, not one of them lifted his sword against Saul because they knew how much respect and honor um, that Saul held towards the anointing of God upon Saul. 
he would not touch him, and he, none of the men would have touched him to harm him. And this young man is is executed on the spot. And Jesus, and, and sorry, <laughs> Jesus, and David, and David says to this young to this young man, "Your blood be upon your head." In verse sixteen, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, "I have slain the Lord's anointed." And then David laments. David laments for Dave, Saul and Jonathan. And that lament, that bit of uh, Hebrew poetry, is beautifully, uh, is beautifully written. It's very sad, and it really cries out. Don't, don't let anyone glory over this. Don't let anyone. Um, Rejoice over this news. Don't let the Philistines hear it. But of course they would need, they would hear it. The shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul. Um, and then verse 23, Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than irons. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you daintily in scarlet. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? Jonathan lies slain upon thy high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. How pleasant have you been to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? Now I know there are people who have suggested that the relationship between David and Jonathan was more than blood brothers. Um, but um, there's nothing in scripture to suggest that. Um, but we all know that there are times when a very close, very dear, um, very deep friendship is actually, it's very different to the love that we have for members of the opposite sex and for those that we are married to. It's a very different kind of love. And that love and devotion and commitment and covenant between David and Jonathan was very precious to David. And he mourned for Jonathan as much as he mourned for Saul. Um, and this whole chapter is its a very important chapter, but it's a very sad chapter. But it's very important to realize that David in no way longed for the death of Saul, even when things were really hard. He, he, he had a different attitude. And it is our attitude, our inner attitude, we have to be so careful of. We have to be really careful of what goes on inside, inside our hearts and minds, that our motives for what we do and how we do it, and how we get the position um, that we are looking for. Um, it matters to God very much. Our motivation. Our motivation for why we do things. Do we do things to gain a, an improvement in our situation? Or we do think, or do we do things uh, because they're right? Anyway, that is that, that is that chapter. I don't really have any deep, deeply spiritual thought from this chapter except to say that it is very important because it marks the transition between Saul and David um, and uh, uh, and all his David's actions at Ziklag were done without knowing that Saul and Jonathan had died there was no ulterior motive in the things that he did uh, after he regained all that spoil from from the Amalekites who took Ziklag but we will see how David gets on um, moving into the kingship because it, it doesn't come easily. Uh, there are those in the nation who back the remaining uh, son of, da uh, of Saul, Ishbosheth. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see how he deals with that. Uh, so read the next couple of chapters, if you will. Um, that's 2 Samuel 2 and 3. And we'll meet again tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye-bye.